My next project was quite an important project. It was called Outland. During the period of Outland, which is 1994 to 2000, I stopped going to the countryside and never returned. All my photographs since 1994-95 are more or less in Johannesburg. In fact, I don't even carry a camera when I go on trips like this. I don't take pictures except really in Johannesburg. During this period, I started to think of myself as an artist in some way or another, and I began to interact in all sorts of ways with the photographs during, with. of this book, The Outland so these Project, were, except for one, which I think is the first one that com comes up here, all of people in some way or another. And I was the director, they were the actors. I was the actor in some way, they were the directors. There was an interactive process going on that somehow or another created a, well, a reality that I referred to as the outland. This was the only, only um, non-person in the, in the book. It's a, it's a child's uh, room in Johannesburg. And you see, it's a very, very interesting montage that existed in this child's bedroom. It's always interesting to me, and I always say this because I'm probably in a more or less liberal community here. Why? Something like this is seen looked down upon. We all seem to go we, you know, to shops, to galleries, to buy things for, to decorate our rooms. But what's wrong with drawing all over the walls and expressing yourself? Is that a pure form of expression? Do we see that as insanity? Do we see that as uh, dirt? Or do, what do we see that as? How do we feel towards that? How do we feel towards a lot of these people if we went into their house now? If you went into these people's houses that I'm showing you now, what would you actually think about them? Would they inspire you? Would they give you nightmares? Would they make you uneasy? Would they tell you something about yourself that you didn't want to hear or see? Brian with his pet pig. You see, we obviously can see the relationship between the pig and Brian. But what's this thing back here? You see that? Where did that get? How did that come about? That's quite an important thing there. Cat catcher. See the relationship of this to that. Quite an interesting story, and I don't, see, I have a lot of pictures tonight. I can't tell too many stories, but this one was quite interesting because last week when I was in Johannesburg, I met this man again. I hadn't seen him for a while. He was on some road that I often travel. And I said, how are you? He said, fine, and he had a very big bag, a very big bag. I see him quite often. I know where he goes, so I said, do you want a lift? Yes, sir. We got in the car. There was a big racket in the car, big racket in the car, scratching, snarling, hissing. He had a big bag of cats. So I took him to town, to the witch doctor. Because in downtown Johannesburg, full of witch doctors, took the cat inside the witch doctor's home, and he put the box there. There wasn't a, it was a big bag on the scale, and boy, I don't know, I think they were like 20 kilograms, something like this, and he got paid 300 rands for this. And the witch doctor in the back, you could see what happens to the cats, because they had all these laundry lines, some with cats' tails, some with cats' ears, some with cats' feet, some with cats' skins. You can imagine what happened to the cats. You see that relationship and that relationship. The people say, do you tell them what to do? How do you tell him to do that? <laughs> Not possible. Or him to do this. See, the, 
the work started, there were periods when the work started to become a bit sculptural. So he's almost a piece of sculpture here. Another point that I always, I always make in these lectures, we can see a very strong relationship to that, to that. Now what about this thing over here? That's a flower. If you take the flower away, you have no picture. But the flower is in the picture. What's the meaning of the flower? Nobody has ever come up with a proper word. That means it's probably good photography. Study a boy and plant. This is the scrap metal worker holding globe. You always see Atlas holding globes like this. This globe has fallen down. This man died at about a year and a half ago. He had some rheumatism and he was he's very strong here. Before he died, he looked like a skeleton. Tommy Sampson in a mask. You can see how well the forms are organized in these pictures. It's very important when you look at my work to see that form is crucial to my meaning. That in a way, the form creates the content and everything I create in the picture has a meaning, has a purpose. There's no, I don't believe in fat in a picture. Everything's lean, mean, and ready in, in supporting everything else. There's no room for something being there that has no meaning and no purpose. It's all integrated visually, formally. This is somebody's kitchen in the outland. This is a tough job, I have to tell you. Big rats are not too bad, but small rats are fast. Mice are even worse and insects are even more worse. These, this is a tough shot, don't kid yourself. These guys don't hang around. What about this up here? What is that all about? What is that telling you? What is the meaning behind that? Sick room. Now you can see all sorts of interesting formal relationships. I don't know if you can see her teeth related back to here, related to the hands. You know, the, right back to the ribs. There's a lot of visual form, forms that integrate to create meaning in this photograph. Eugene on the phone. You know, photography does something or tells you something more profoundly than any other art form. That thing is that time is never repeatable. That no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, even if you push that button one 250th second later, there's always something different. The time is never repeatable. That's what it tells you. It's about preserving a moment. It's not only about preserving a moment, it's about creating some moment. And that moment, if it's a good photograph, says something that we might refer to as truth. Now, these words are very, very difficult. I cannot tell you what the word truth means. But it tells you something that reverberates inside. It feels like an essence. It feels like a moment you don't forget. It tells you something that you've been looking for. Sleeping baby on floor. Portrait of Sleeping Girl. This photograph is taken in 2000. Things started to creep into these pictures around then. You can start to see draw, you know, these drawings here. You see them all over the place. And there started to be a change in the direction of the pictures around then. The drawings started to come through. But the people were still in the pictures. But there, there were drawings starting to come about. You see that? That can't be repeated. That's a tough shot. That really is a tough shot. Cats are really tough. They get spooked. They run. 
There's no, they don't have time for me. I may have time for them. They don't have time for me. I think his name is uh, Julius. I forgot his name. Coming underneath John's bed. It's a short story about John, because that's John. And here's John again. I don't know how much people here know about the history of Africa. But in the 70s, and I think in the 80s, there was a war in Angola. And the South African army was involved in Angola. And John went to Angola. And John was in a trench, I guess, in a shell and in nearby. John was never the same. John had a symptom that they call shell shock. John slept in the room outside of Johannesburg. It was a small little holding with these two guys. This one was from Mozambique. And this one was from Lesotho. One day, John woke up and this man was dead. A couple of weeks later, John woke up and this man was dead. John stopped eating and drinking for 13 days. Nobody did anything to John. They let John stay in bed and they didn't do anything to John. They just let him stay there, not eat, not drink. On the 13th day, John died. 